LS3 cam swaps. Do you get more power when you step up in cam size? More importantly, do you get bigger gains with ported heads? Check out this test. Cam swap with stock heads and with Airflow Research LS3 heads. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner and where are my LS3 fans? You know, the 6.2 liter all aluminum motor, the best motor ever made. Certainly if you were to ask the LS3 guys, they might be saying that. But before we get going, please welcome to the channel. Let's take a look at some camshaft tests on an LS3. And we got two different situations here. We got one combination that has a ported head and we're doing successive cam upgrades. And then we have another combination that has stock heads that we're doing successive cam upgrades. So the question is, if we go from your stage one, stage two, I don't know, stage three-ish kind of camshaft with ported heads, do we get more of a gain than we do if we're just using a stock head? So we got some cool airflow research cam tests coming on. And then we got some top secret stuff that I did when I was doing some work for the guys at Brian Tooley Racing and testing lots of their cams. But this gives us an opportunity to see what all these cams do, what kind of power gains you get, do you lose any power down low, and do you gain more power when you have ported heads? Okay, let's take a look at going from a, we can call these stage one, stage two, stage three camshafts on an LS3, or we can look at them the way that I do, uh, 224, 227, 231, or in the case of these Airflow Research cams, 223, 227, and 232, so right in the same range. And this will be an interesting test because we've got two sets of data points on two different motors and the camshafts are kind of similar. We could take a look at the results and see if the results themselves are also similar. So we're gonna jump right in. Our first test motor is basically a Crate LS3 I got from the guys from, bought from the guys at Gander Chevrolet way back. We use this for lots and lots of testing. The factory GM LS3 stuff, I came right off the assembly line and stuff. But we use this for a lot of testing. In this particular instance, we ran the LS3 the way that we normally do with a Holly HP management system. This one had inch and seven eighths headers. We had the factory LS3 intake manifold and a 90 to 92 millimeter throttle body. We run with no accessories the way that we normally do. But the one that makes this different on the Airflow Research uh, cam test is that this one was also equipped with Airflow Research heads. Now we've seen in the past, and we're going to talk a little bit about this, and you're going to get a chance to make a comment. But the Airflow Research heads, LS3 heads, I have videos up on. They, they make good power. But on a motor with a stock camshaft, you just don't really get very much from a ported head with an otherwise stock camshaft. You don't, you don't tend to get the gains offered by extra flow from the cylinder head until you get up to where the motor is needing the more flow, and I'll show you what I mean. But we're going to start off with our Stage 1 cam from Airflow Research, and you might notice, hey, Richard, there is no baseline. Where is the one with the stock cam? And here's where you're going to get to make your comments. But run with the Airflow Airflow Research Stage 1 cam, and the Stage 1 cam was a 604 595 lift, 223, 231 degree duration, and 115 degree LSA plus 4, and run with this camshaft on our Air Airflow Research headed LS3, 561 horsepower, and peak torque stood at 518 foot-pounds. But let's take a look, well, how does that compare? What would a stock cam do on this thing? And this is the only, this is the only bit of information because if I did run a stock cam with this, which I might have, I can't find that run. It might be in another test folder that we use to start this thing all off with. But I do have, I was able to find this and this will give us a pretty good idea. So you guys let me know in the comments what you think. This is actually the same motor and run with a stock cam, run with the, the LS3 head, the same headers and all that. But it was run with a set of CNC ported GM heads, basically the ones that you buy from Summit and Jegs and all the places. And here's the thing. <laughs> This is not an airflow research head. An airflow research head probably would be a little bit better than the CNC ported factory GM head. But with a stock cam, how much better would it really be? Because going from with a stock cam, going from a stock head to a completely CNC ported head is worth about eight or 10 horsepower. That's it. Not because the CNC headed uh, heads don't work. They do. You could, they can support a lot of power. You could support 700 plus horsepower with a CNC ported LS3 head. 
but when you have a 6.2 with a stock camshaft, you're not asking it to flow a whole bunch because the motor itself doesn't need a lot of additional airflow. So my point is the difference between this CNC head and an airflow research head might be bigger as we go up in displacement and power, but on a stock LS3 with a stock camshaft, because the variation between a stock cam and a, and a, or a stock head and a ported head is only about eight or 10 horsepower, what really would be the difference between an airflow research head and a CNC ported factory GM head with a stock cam? I don't know, probably next to nothing, but let me know in the comments what you guys think, but we'll use this kind of as our baseline. And so with a ported head uh, on an otherwise stock LS3 with a header and the way that we run it, 502 horsepower or so, so we jumped up quite a bit from 502 to 560 horsepower with the smallest of the camshafts. So you can see it worked pretty well, but let's go quickly. We'll take a look at the stage two cam. You can see the stage two cam, which was a 620, 612 lift, 227, 235 degree duration at 50 and 114 plus three. And you can see that the stage two cam did add more power. So we were up doing pretty well. 575 horsepower peak torque was up just a little bit because most of the gains kind of came past the peak torque area but 524 foot pounds of torque and you can see below that there really wasn't much of a difference where we would see changes is down below 3000 rpm and obviously the drivability the part throttle stuff would also change with these bigger cams so the final look here is a stage three cam Again, we gained more power. That one's up to 590 horsepower. And peak torque is up again to 532 foot-pounds. But like the others, below 5,000 RPM, really not much of a change. But down at 3,000 and lower, you would start to see a trade-off in power. So the question becomes, as always, where do you want your power? And also, these things are making pretty good gains. And obviously, now part of that equation is the fact that it has in there a set of airflow research ported heads. So maybe the gains that we're getting from the cams are even better. But let's see if that's actually true. Now we're going to take a look at a similar change in camshaft stage one, two, or three on stock headed LS3. Okay, now let's compare the results that we got with the Airflow Research headed LS3 and the different stages of the Airflow Research cams. We'll compare that to another test that I did. This one was run with the stock LS3 heads and different stages of cams. In fact, this was testing that I did way back for the guys at Brian Tooley Racing when they were initially revamping some of their LS3 things. In fact, this was before they even had their dyno, if I remember right. And so we were doing a bunch of stuff and <laughs> so some of the things I can't talk about, but we can talk about basically generic deals and what happened when I ran you know, three different size camshafts. And you guys can take a look, I'll give you the specs and stuff, but we'll see what the gains that we get doing this versus what we got when we had the airflow research headed combination. So we'll start off with our stock camshaft, inch and seven eighths headers, LS3 intake manifold, manual 90 to 92 millimeter throttle body, Holly HP, and run in this manner with the stock heads and the stock camshaft. The LS3 crate motor produced 493 horsepower and 489 foot pounds of torque. So let's see what happened when we put our, uh, we can call it a stage one. It was actually a 224 cam. So this particular cam was a 624 590 lift, 224, 232 degree duration and 113 degree lobe separation angle. And run with that cam, we have peak numbers of 547 horsepower and 514 foot-pounds of torque. So the camshafts gained, this camshaft gained about 53 horsepower on this combination. And if we take a look back at the airflow research search results, that stage one camshaft of similar kind of specs gained 58 horsepower on that combination against our maybe somewhat questionable baseline. Now let's take a look and see when we stepped up in camshaft to what I'm calling a 227 cam. That particular cam was a 637, 612 lift, 227, 234 degrees of duration, and 113 plus three. Run with that camshaft, we got new peak numbers of 555 horsepower 
and 515 foot-pounds of torque. So that camshaft versus the stock LS3 gained 62 horsepower. When we stepped up to that similar size camshaft on the Airflow Research headed deal, we gained 72 horsepower. So we're getting better relative gains when the test motor has better cylinder heads, which is not surprising. And all of this is checking out here. So on the final camshaft, the, we'll call this the 231 camshaft, that combination produced 566 horsepower, so we are gaining power with each step up in cam duration and 517 foot-pounds of torque. So compared to the stock cam, this 231 cam improved the peak power output by 73 horsepower. If we take a look at the similar size cam on the Airflow Research headed deal, we gained 87 horsepower. So with more airflow, it's really starting to take advantage of the things that the camshaft has to offer. Plus, obviously, those camshafts are slightly different specs. So you guys can argue back and forth about what the real gain is. But all of this stuff is tracking the way that it's supposed to. When we go up in camshaft size, we're picking up power. Whether you're doing it with a stock head or a ported head, you're still going to get good gain. <laughs> so there you have it. But before we go, I want you to take a look at one thing. Take a look down low, you know, through most of the curve, there's not really a big change in power from 3,500 to 5,000 RPM from any of the camshafts. We do see gains, uh, in just like with the airflow research headed combination, with these cams that I was that helping demonstrate with or test with the guys from Brian Tooley Racing, we see gains out at the top from 5,000 on out. But I want you all to know also that below 3,000 RPM, you would start to see losses from the bigger cam. The drivability also would be a little bit more suspect, let's say, and require maybe a great deal more tuning, and you would be losing power down low. So things to think about with the bigger camshaft, it's not just all win. <laughs> there can't always be an all win. There has to be some kind of loss down low. I'm Richard Oldham. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.